CataractCoach.com, managing capsular issues so you can still implant your premium lens. So starting off with the Rexus here, oh my goodness, Woo, what happened? So what we want to do instead is you want to buzz in here with the Faco probe and create a nice opening here. This is an intumescent white cataract, and we want to still be able to put in our premium lens in the bag. So we'll do the double Rexus technique to avoid that Argentinian flag sign. And now here at the end with a new lens in the bag, now we can go ahead and go around and, and enlarge that Rexus. So we've enlarged it there. We can nick the other side and complete it as well. So watch this now. Here's a different case. Cleaning up, doing some cortex removal, and look, boom, right there. He just broke a hole in the posterior capsule. How did that happen? Well, listen, patients can have weak tissues. There can be some weak protoplasm, weak posterior capsules. So we're going to try create a posterior rexus out of that hole. And you may or may not succeed. I'm trying my best because a posterior rexus, even if it's small or eccentric, is okay because that'll prevent the capsule from ripping out further. But I'm just kind of unable to do it despite my best efforts. That break is such that it doesn't really want to allow me to. So let's try and make another opening here. Gonna make another paracentesis, get that last bit of cortex. I don't want to leave that in the eye. Now let's put our lens in. This is a toric trifocal lens. It's going in the capsule bag despite that break there. Now you can see the poster capsule did open up a little bit, but there's still sufficient support here. We can dial the lens in the correct orientation. Now in this case, I do not recommend going behind the lens to remove the viscoelastic. Think about it. So now the lens is in good position. Let's first seal up the incision because I don't want to cause any instability in the anterior chamber. I don't want the AC to collapse and vitreous to come through that break. Right now, the anterior hyaloid face is intact. There's zero vitreous prolapse. Please, let's keep it that way. The toric lens is, the toric marks are nicely lined up on the appropriate axis and the center of the uh, light reflex, the center of the pupil, is beautifully aligned up with the trifocal diffractive rings. So let's remove the viscoelastic as, as much as we can. We're lowering our settings here too. So on the flow on the machine, let's cut it by half. So maybe only 30 cc's a minute and lower the, the vacuum too. And now we, you see we didn't let the AC collapse. The lens is in good orientation. There's the break in the posterior capsule. And I can tell you this patient had a nice outcome. Now I'm going in there with balanced salt solution just to kind of squirt BSS into the angle to wash out any retained viscoelastic because I know I can't do a really aggressive viscoelastic removal with the IA probe for fear of having vitreous prolapse. So in this case, we're still able to implant a toric trifocal lens in the capsular bag, despite having a posterior capsule rupture. So fortunately, again, no vitreous prolapse. There's the end of the case. Let's show you another one. You know we should never put a single piece of acrylic lens in the sulcus. You can see that transillumination defect and the problems. So let's look at this case. Patient having a nice rexus done. That looks pretty good. Everything looks fine here. Let's do the surgery. And as I'm doing the cortex removal, I notice, oh, look at the right side of your screen there. The patient's 6 o'clock. That anterior capsular rim has radialized it. Maybe the phaco probe hit it or the chopper or some other instrument. But there's a big radialization there. So fill the capsular bag with viscoelastic. Do not let the AC collapse. Because you don't want that one area to zip around to the back and hit the posterior capsule. So now, guess what? We're putting in a toric trifocal again. But you have that weakness in the anterior capsular rim. So don't overfill the eye with viscoelastic because I don't want to have any pressure causing that radialized area to zip around to the back. So gently, gently, gently putting the toric lens in the eye. Again, toric trifocal. It's going to go in very easily here. And now we're going to get it centered up the way we want it and get those rings appropriately placed. There it is, nicely, nicely opening up. Now you see we placed the haptics a little bit before the spot where I want them. I just want to take our time opening that lens up. You don't want to manipulate the lens too much in the capsule bag. Again, I don't want to place any stress that's going to cause that anterior capsule run out to go zip around to the back. So now I've got the lens pretty much where I want it. It's lined up on the toric axis. The trifocal rings are pretty well centered. So now the key is how do you remove viscoelastic and still keep everything stable? The key is to get out of Dodge, right? So we've got the eye probe. We want to remove viscoelastic. But before we do that, let's hydrate the main incision again. So again, we've seen this now in a couple cases. 
I don't want that incision to leak. So when I take the eye probe out of the eye, I do not want the AC to collapse. So eye probe going in the eye gently. We reduced our settings. So we cut our flow by half. So from 60 cc's a minute to 30. You can also decrease the infusion pressure. You can also decrease the vacuum level. And just take your time here. Now you're wondering, there's a little bit of stuff there. Should I polish the capsule? Come on now. Let's be serious here. Don't touch anything. I'll just barely nudge the lens over a little bit more, trying to be as gentle as I can to get this lined up. Now you can see there's that radialized area to the right side of the IA probe. And now it's pretty good. I've pretty much removed the viscoelastic. Don't let the AC collapse. So watch. In the left hand, BSS on the cannula, and do not let the AC collapse. Now take the IA probe out, inject, 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 and good. Keep that AC form. Do not let that eye collapse. Because any of those changes in the, the anterior chamber pressure or depth and all that, and lens motion, all those things can cause that radialized area to zip back. So now we're pretty good. Again, washing out the angle with balanced salt solution just to get some of that extra retained viscoelastic out to prevent a pressure spike on day one. And it looks pretty darn good. And now we have the optic overlap for probably about 270 degrees, maybe even more, 300 degrees. And so that's going to be su plenty sufficient. This lens is going to stay in perfect position. I can tell you the patient, the normal post-op outcome is thrilled, had a beautiful result. She can't tell the difference between this eye and the other eye. And so there is a way of just, you know, getting out of dodge here when you have the complications and still being able to put in your lens appropriately. So whether you have an anterior capsular issue a posterior capsule issue, there are cases where you can still put in your single piece acrylic premium lens in the capsule bag and still finish the case and have a beautiful outcome. Thank you for watching.